Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Bhagam Radian here in Orlando, Florida for the Air Force Association's annual Air Warfare Symposium, the number one winter gathering of U.S. Air Force leaders, industry executives, analysts, thought leaders, uh, and media here in Florida. Our coverage here is sponsored by L3 Technologies and Leonardo DRS, and we're over here on the Rolls-Royce stand to talk to Craig McVeigh, uh, Senior Vice President for uh, uh, Strategic Systems uh, at uh, Rolls-Royce. Sir, it's always a pleasure seeing you. Yep. Uh, good to catch up. Uh, having a good show so far? Excellent show. Yeah, we've had quite a bit of exposure, uh, good opportunities to uh, tell our story uh, with the Air Force leadership and certainly with some of the, the up and coming Air Force leadership, the young junior officers, the men and women that will be leading us tomorrow. So uh, it's a big deal. It, absolutely outstanding. We had a great conversation with uh, General Spencer and it's really different. The character of this event, for example, compared with airspace and cyber, which is much more general officer, colonel grade, whereas here you see a lot of uh, enlisted folks, you see a lot of NCOs and you see a lot of junior officers. And university so students as well. I mean, it's, just a, it's a great opportunity to tell them uh, about Rolls-Royce, tell them our story and tell them how we're given, uh, contributing certainly to the Department of Defense and more specifically to the Air Force. Um, so as uh, stand displays go, you guys apparently are uh, the winner. Uh, you guys have a half scale B-52 engine nacelle, uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and, um, but you know, obviously it's one of the more important com competitions that are going on. The Air Force has talked roughly about $9 billion in terms of re-engineering uh, the B-52 fleet. Right now it's uh, Pratt & Whitney TF-33 uh, powered. Once upon a time it powered almost <laughs> everything in the Air Force. Uh, it was a foundational engine, whether it was for 141s or KC-135s. Um, let's talk a little bit uh, about uh, the competition and where it stands, right? Because um, you're looking at a study getting started next week. So from your perspective, where are we? And more importantly, you and I were talking before this, how the program, the Air Force really wants to use this program to do things differently. It's one of the programs sure. that Dr. Roper has, has focused on. Talk to us uh, a little bit about what's going to be happening uh, and where you think, because you had so an innovative take on how you think this is going to be playing out. Yeah, so first of all, I would say the Air Force um, is pursuing uh, in production new commercial off-the-shelf engine solution for replacement of the TF-33. That in and of itself is unique. I mean, we're talking about part of the nuclear triad. This nuclear bomber that has been in operation now for several decades, with the expectation that it's going to fly for several more decades, but the idea is to go out and identify the right commercial off-the-shelf engine uh, that is available, that meets all the requirements, uh, can be e easily integrated, well, I say easily, but it will be integrated into the B-52 platform as a system, an entire system, and can accommodate all the requirements that that platform will, re will need in the way of power offtake, in the way of thrust, and so forth, time on wing, uh, proven reliability, and I'll talk to that in a minute. So for Rolls-Royce's part, we're offering the F-130, and the F-130 entered into service. It's a commercial engine that entered into service back in the 2012 time frame, and it's part of a much larger family of engines. Uh, the F-130 that's flying today on the Air Force, it's on the E-11 Bacon aircraft, it's on the C-37 aircraft, it's going to be on the ECX aircraft, or Gulfstream products, the E-11, of course, is Bombardier, but those are platforms that are flying it now, and that family has got over 22 million hours of operational time, flight time. That is proven reliability. And for this engine, it's, as I said, been in, in, in a production in existence now for over six years, has got over 700,000 uh, plus hours on it. So, so that's the kind of thing that we think is going to be important to the Air Force is something that works. The second thing I would say is that, is that it, it's a, what we would call the perfect fit. If you were to ask me to build an engine today to provide for the B-52, and I would look at the specs and what's required for that platform so that it, it pretty much meets the requirements and thrust and so forth, I would have built that engine. I mean, it's got, as far as the fan diameter, the, the current thrust, the capabilities, albeit it's got a FADEC, electronic engine control uh, capability, as opposed to a hydromechanical fuel control for the TF-33. But those kinds of requirements are certainly going to uh, be very, very competitive uh, for this, uh, this offering. And so we're excited about that. We're, w you, you touched on it a moment ago, and that was this rapid prototyping, Section 804. Uh, we've listened very clearly to the Secretary of the Air Force, to Dr. Roper as the Service Acquisition Executive, and certainly to the B-52 SPO, Propulsion SPO. They're very focused on uh, a rapid prototyping solution so that we, they can do what they need to do as far as identifying it, developing it, and get it into the service in, in a very a short period of time, certainly shorter than the more traditional approach that in acquisition that we've seen in the past. What's unique about this uh, particular effort, as I mentioned to you earlier, is this engine, this is engine company against engine company. This doesn't involve primes and so forth. This is, right, this is up against what do you got, 
How can you integrate it? What's your solution? And is it, is it the right one? And Dr. Roper's idea is let's use rapid prototyping to identify that solution early. Let's find it, let's get after it, and let's get it into the system. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it is right back to the future, right? Uh, or future to the back, or however you want to yeah. put it, right? This is this is an old-timey competition where you're getting uh, the engine uh, suppliers uh, together and not letting the prime do the selecting of it. The service is going to select it, you're going to integrate it on. You mentioned something about electromechanical controls. One, that's what the technology allowed at the time uh, for the people. Hydromechanical, excuse me. Um, but that was also a nuclear requirement to make sure that whatever happens in a nuclear blast in an EMP environment, the aircraft was still going to operate. And there's a little bit of a debate and discussion about whether something that has fully digital flight controls is going to be acceptable. How does that work? Because the B-52 is going to remain a swing roll airplane that is going to span the nuclear mission to the conventional mission. Um, what, what do you need to hear from the Air Force at this point? Because my understanding is the information that you're getting is coming from the contractor, which is commercially available as opposed to something which is coming from the Air Force. Do you have any sense at this point how, what the state of discussion is on that requirement, which could be a very, very important requirement at the end of the day? Well, while we're still waiting to gain a little bit more granularity in the specific nuclear requirements that are coming out of the, the SPO, uh, we do know that there are engines operating today on the bomber fleet, whether it's a B-1, a B-2, and certainly the one in production now, the B-21, all have nuclear hardening requirements, cyber requirements. And so it's, it's, it's clearly uh, a, a situation of making sure that, the, in receiving from the Air Force, the specific requirements that they want with regard to nuclear hardening, all of the offerings for this engine competition are commercial engines. All of them will require some degree of nuclear hardening, whether it's the FADEC, it's, it's, it's the, uh, 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 any, any of the controls or any of the things that are associated with it, they're going to require some type of nuclear hardening. And so all we are anxious to see is the actual requirement captured so that we can get after it. We're, we, we know rapid prototyping very well. We've done that for a long time. Uh, we, we are very capable in digital engineering as far as design and certainly the manufacturing side. So, so we're very confident that we can accommodate what those requirements will be. It's just, it's just making sure that we hear what the Air Force wants and then we go after it. All of these commercial engines are going to require some degree of, of, of change. Um, let me also ask you, uh, time on wing, uh, but also fuel burn efficiency. At this point, what can you tell us in terms of uh, you know, what, what, what the characteristics or the selling points or the efficiencies you think you guys are going to be delivering with the uh, F-130? Well, let me just say it will be very competitive. When we look at the TF-33 today, and, uh, and it's been quite the workhorse for the B-52 fleet, our offering is going to be an order of magnitude significantly better, and you would expect that when you look at some of the engineering that's gone into uh, the fan. Uh, the compressor and certainly the uh, the turbine section. We th th these are 21st century engines. We there's an expectation, of course, that you realize considerable efficiencies uh, in the way of specific fuel consumption. So, so we we know all the offerings are going to be competitive. We believe ours will be. Where do we break out as far as the others go? It, it, it could be in digital design. It could be in digital manufacturing. Certainly, it's in proven reliability because this comes from a family of engines and it's currently in the inventory. So we think that's pretty compelling. Craig, uh, thanks very much. It's always a pleasure talking Absolutely. to you. Uh, best of luck in the competition. Uh, it's, it's certainly a competitive field. Uh, three companies that know engines really well. Uh, you guys, obviously GE and Pratt & Whitney, so it's going to be fascinating. And you think the Air Force is going to stay on its down-select decision, which is er, uh, next year? Well, when we look at the Air Force schedule, we know that, that we would expect, anyway, some type of a, a draft RFP to come out later on in this year. We, but we also know that there's a rapid prototyping activity that's going on, and, and, and that certainly gives Dr. Roper and General Collins at the PEO level, it gives those uh, gentlemen an opportunity to explore what engines are really out the front runners and how they would go after them. So we think we're very well positioned to compete in that regard. We're certainly going to be positioned uh, when it comes time for source selection. Craig McVeigh, thanks very much again, sir. My pleasure. Take care.